from WFLA TV. Eight on your side. This is News Channel 8 at 6. A condemned killer dies in the electric chair, but a child murderer gets one more day. A last minute change derails Florida's first double execution in 31 years. Good evening, I'm Bob Height. I'm Irene Mayer, in for Gail Searins. The man who murdered a Lakeland boy 14 years ago will wait one more day for his execution. Philip Atkins was scheduled to die today, but that's on hold till tomorrow. Another killer did die in the electric chair today. News Channel 8's Lance Williams is live at the state prison in Rayford. Lance, what's the latest? Well, Irene, it was scheduled to be another sobering mile marker for Florida's death row. Back-to-back -back executions for the first time in 31 years. Jerry White was the only one who was executed today, punished for the murder of an Orange County convenience store customer back in 1981. White was pronounced dead at 12.19 this afternoon. And tonight, Philip Atkins still waits on his fate. He's scheduled to die tomorrow morning at 10, the end of 14 years of agony for the mother of six-year-old Tony Castillo. This is all Tony's mother has left of her six-year-old son. A few pictures, an old doll, and his Christmas stocking. A silent shrine to a child who was savagely beaten by his killer, so no one could identify the body. He just totally crushed his skull, and his jaw was on the other side of his face, and all his baby teeth were missing. <laughs> and this is all I have left is his little piece of hair. And as his mom grieves for Tony's life, the boy's killer fights for his. Philip Atkins has spent 14 years and millions of taxpayers' dollars on death row. Time enough for plenty of thinking. And I hope every night that he thinks about what he did to Tony, and I hope it haunts him. It haunts the neighborhood where Tony lived, just across the way from his killer. Lois Richardson yes, yes. lives in Tony's house now and thinks Philip Atkins is a waste Phil of space. Mm -hmm. They should go on and kill him today, not tonight not tomorrow but today at this minute really he's been living too long for him to do something like that to a kid but lois and tony's mom are gonna have to wait as philip atkins tries again to stave off the electric chair but tony's mom figures sooner or later the appeals will end and so will philip atkins life he's gonna start his punishment once he's dead because he's gonna go to hell and then that's where he's going to have his real agony. And tonight, as people on both sides of the death penalty issue debate the merits of capital punishment, here are some sobering figures on the cost of punishment. It's estimated it costs about $700,000 for someone to spend life in prison. It's estimated it costs more than four times that much to put someone to death. Between appeals and special security, it costs about $3 million to send someone to Florida's electric chair. Irene. Thank you very much, Lance. An exclusive News Channel 8 flash poll out tonight shows strong support for the death penalty across the Tampa Bay area. An overwhelming 81% of those surveyed this afternoon say they favor capital punishment and believe it discourages crime. Just 14% oppose it, and 5% say they are just not sure. A suspected serial killer is no stranger to the court system, but a published report says he's done almost no time for any crimes. Right now, Glenn Rogers is in a Kentucky jail accused of murdering five people across the country, including a Gibsonton woman. An Ohio newspaper says he faced repeated charges for assaulting women, but he's done almost no jail time. Police arrested Rogers last month after a cross-country manhunt. Jury selection resumes tomorrow morning at Gary Tippin's trial in Tampa. It is the first trial involving the shooting of Tampa police officers Mike Vigil and Kevin Howell. Because Tippins was not the trigger man, he does not face attempted murder charges. Instead, he is accused of carjacking, cocaine trafficking, and false imprisonment. But family, uh, the family of a man killed by a Bradenton police officer has filed a federal lawsuit. They claim the shooting of 24-year-old Patrick Pierre was not justified. News Channel 8's Rod Challenger says the lawsuit targets the officer, the police chief, the department, and the city. The October shooting touched off angry demonstrations like this in Bradenton. The victim, Patrick Pierre, was black, the cop white. The official version, Pierre came after Corporal John Schlemmer with a beer bottle. 
but some witnesses say he posed no threat. When I seen the bottle that was laying way back here and the body's laying way up there, that just told me right there that the officer shot this guy. He executed this man. 24-year-old Patrick Pierre, a Haitian immigrant, was chased by the officer after a rent dispute with his landlord. He wore only his undershorts. Our position is that this young man was executed by the use of ex excessive force that had no rhyme or reason. The suit says the shooting was a malicious, unnecessary, totally inappropriate, and possibly a sadistic act. The lawsuit claims the officer could have arrested Pierre without using deadly force. It also questions the officer's statement that he fired as Pierre moved toward him. You should find multiple gunshot wounds to the chest if, in fact, this version occurred. Uh, what we have, unfortunately, are no gunshot wounds to the chest. A grand jury ruled the officer acted properly, but the family's lawyer says the grand jury never heard from witnesses. Patrick is dead. Why? We have to find out that in the newspaper. Tell me why. Pierre's family still has questions and hopes the lawsuit will bring out the truth and ease tensions in Bradenton. I'm Rod Challenger, News Channel 8. City of Bradenton officials won't comment on the lawsuit. A dangerous fugitive is on the loose, and Polk County Crime Stoppers need your help to track him. They're searching for this man, Arthur Van. Investigators say he's a major player in a cocaine trafficking ring. If you have any information on Van, call Crime Stoppers. The number's on your screen, 1-800-226-TIPS. A reward of up to $1,000 is offered in this case. Millions of dollars are at stake in the Buccaneers stadium saga. As the deadline nears, some worry fan support for a new stadium may be slipping because of the Bucs losing skid. News Channel 8's Craig Smith says as time grows short, lots of people are growing nervous. Bucs quarterback Trent Dilfer has been a little testy lately. It's probably just those guys on the other team. But the Bucs one lost record is on a too familiar downslope. Owners are threatening to move the team unless they get a shiny new stadium. So what's the hometown crowd think? Big deal, they may win one season, they're going to lose again. And it's just not worth the effort to keep them. They cost us too much. This is uh, a business. I run a business just like anybody else, and I don't expect the city and the county and the state to bail me out every time something happens that they don't like. Boosters in the fight to keep the Bucks here say the trend in the team's record won't necessarily torpedo their efforts. But it certainly can't help. The Buck coach thinks most supporters gave their best shots before the latest losing streak. That was also done at a time in the season when everybody was saying uh, much nicer things. Orlando did say no to a new stadium. Now a two-county team effort could make that no a maybe. The NFL shuffle could still send the Bucks to Cleveland or Baltimore in the turmoil surrounding the Browns' plan to move to Maryland. On the plus side, airport plans could pump another $25 million into a new Tampa stadium. Tampa International may pay that just to make sure nothing is built near the stadium that might interfere with planes trying to land at TIA. But I don't think they're going to leave. Why not? You don't think they're going to leave? Uh -uh. I don't think they're going to leave. I think they're going to leave. They need to send them on. I'm sorry. But the record is not scaring away too many fans. The Green Bay game coming up could be a sellout. Craig Smith, News Channel 8. Next week, Tampa Mayor Dick Greco travels to Cleveland to meet with other mayors who are worried that their NFL teams might be jumping to other cities. A scandal involving the governor's re-election campaign gets ready to make history. That story is coming up next on the News Channel. Also, eight on your side cameras cruise a mall parking lot to see what shoppers are leaving for thieves. See what we found and what you can do to protect your valuables during this holiday season. And vultures take over a Bay Area city. It's a bizarre bird invasion, and we'll take you there. I'm Steve Hudelson in the Storm Team Weather Center. It was a beautiful weekend. Today, no slouch either. Temperatures reaching the upper 70s this afternoon. Skies are clear. It's now 65 to 70 across Tampa Bay. The full Storm Team forecast when I come back later in the newscast. This is the... Washington had Watergate in the 70s. Polk County had Eagle Gate just a few months ago, but the hot topic in Tallahassee this week is Phone Gate. The scandal involves scare calls made by Governor Childs' re-election campaign last year. Senate hearings begin tomorrow. It marks the first time a Florida governor will testify under oath before a committee investigating possible political misconduct. 
The issue centers on the phone calls to older voters uh, bad-mouthing Childs' opponent during the election. Despite a spat over school administration, University of uh, Florida President John Lombardi says he's going to stay. He told the governor today he'll remain in Gainesville to lead UF despite squabbles with the Board of Regents. Lombardi recently interviewed for a job at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. Thieves are on the job this holiday season, shopping for easy targets while you shop for bargains. But Aid on Your Side is here to help. We took our cameras out to see what people are doing wrong and to give you some tips to avoid becoming a victim. Jeff Patterson is here now with the story, so what did you find? Well, it's a good thing photojournalist Eric Kohlsheiser and I aren't real thieves, because if we were, we could have made a lot of money in just mm -hmm. one trip to the mall. Each year we give you safety tips for the shopping season, but this time we went out to see if people are listening to our advice. <laughs> It takes just seconds to break into your car. With the permission of the West Shore Mall, we went Christmas shopping in their parking lot. In just a few moments, I found a purse left on a front seat of an unattended car. Then we found two cars in the back of a parking lot, both with packages in full view. I found a tennis racket, even suitcases in cars, all inviting targets to real crooks. Unlike a real thief, we waited to talk to the car owner. Now, if we were thieves, which car in the parking lot do you think we would break into? I wouldn't doubt that this one would be a pretty good one. I yeah, have quite a bit in there. Another shopper left a Burdines bag on the back seat. It would have been an easy target because, see, the car right next to you has got a club on it. Right. Which, which car do you think a thief would have broken into? Definitely mine. You're right. <laughs> and if you think you're only going to leave your car for a few minutes... It doesn't matter. You can leave your car for one minute and it'll be gone. It takes these kids approximately 14 seconds to actually steal the entire car. And it takes less time to break into it and just get the goodies out of it. Mm. Lieutenant Bob Northrup challenges you to use common sense to avoid becoming a victim. Here are some of his top tips. Go shopping in the morning if you can. Statistics show you're less likely to be robbed at that time of day. Stay alert. Look to see if anyone suspicious is hanging around. And if you do see something strange, let the mall security know right away. Here's a good one. Lock all of your packages inside the trunk, unlike the people today. And don't leave anything in plain view in the front of your car. And don't carry too many packages to your car at one time. That makes you an easy target. Did it seem like all the doors were locked? Didn't try that, because we didn't want to take this thief thing one step too far. But we wandered around in that parking lot for some time, and nobody reported us. I thought I looked pretty suspicious. <laughs> OK, Jeff. We've always thought that about I you, know. Jeff. Thank you very much. 14 seconds to steal the mm -hmm. whole car. But well, it is a clear and cool night outside, a perfect Florida evening. We hope you have a chance to step outside and enjoy it. Here's a live look outside our studios in Tampa. Will this great stretch of weather last through the week? Find out next in Steve's Forecast. It's holiday gift. Another glorious day today. It was. How about the weekend? Just oh, absolutely boy. fantastic. Nothing to complain about. However, if you are a weather forecaster, we are stuck in a bit of a rut. Check out the Storm Team headlines. No doubt about that. But it's not a rut that we're complaining about. Uh-uh. Don't start calling in. More fine weather ahead through much of the week. The only problem, there will be some fog just about each and every morning right through midweek. And the fog may be thick in some places. And we're also going to have a look at how much rain we've seen so far this year. Here's the way things look uh, uh, for the forecast for this evening. Looking at lower 60s. We're in the mid to upper 60s right now, so temperatures won't fall too much. If you're out in the roads very early in the morning between about 4 and 8 a.m., that's when we could see the patchy fog develop. Temperatures by then will be in the 50s. From space, well, you're going to see some interesting things. Clouds begin to increase off to our northwest. Some pretty good clouds producing some rainfall up here, but notice as the loop continues, well, those clouds begin to peter on out. This is a cold front that is dying out as it approaches us. It has produced some rain from New Orleans up through the Panhandle. The showers are moving to the southeast, but they're moving into bone dry air, and they stand very little chance of making it into Tampa Bay. We may see a few isolated showers from this. Uh, I should say clouds, but that's about it. How about so far this year? Well, believe it or not, even though we have seen no rain at all over the last couple of weeks, Tampa International still a foot above normal. The uh, strawberry growers in Plant City, pretty ple uh, pleasantly surprised. About two inches above normal there. Better than eight inches above normal in Ruskin. Nine inches above normal in Bradenton. Up to the north, different story. Inverness, a little bit below normal for rainfall. And again, we have very little in the way of rainfall in our forecast right through the next five days. Weather map for tomorrow shows 
sunshine, again from start to finish, with the exception of that early morning fog. And here comes another one, another cold front. This one does have showers with it. This one will make it through Tampa Bay. This one won't be bringing us rainfall, but it will bring us slightly cooler, drier air as we head toward the end of the week. Forecast for tonight, again, 50s, with, uh, again, that patchy fog around toward dawn. Plenty of sunshine once we get rid of the early morning clouds, and we'll warm quickly. Highs reaching the mid to upper 70s in the afternoon. Marine forecast calls for a variable wind becoming onshore, very light. Sea slight Gulf water temperature only 66. Nationally, high pressure controls the uh, roost over most of the east. This very little storm not producing much in the way of rain or snow, but a lot of wind for the Rockies. West coast at this point high and dry, but more rain on the way for the Pacific Northwest. Our five day forecast does not call for any rainfall. In fact, it calls for some of the best weather in the country. Plenty of sunshine each day. Again, just some early morning clouds. And although you see it cooling off a little bit long about uh, Thursday and Friday, I don't think 72 is all too hard to take when you consider it's going to be barely zero uh, places like Montana, Wyoming. Mm -hmm. So enjoy the weather. We will. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, sure. Steve. Gators fans are chopping up Fiesta Bowl tickets as they dream of a national title. Dick Griffin has the Florida Frenzy next. And at 630, could these tiny pieces of metal save your life or put you in danger? Find out what new medical procedure they're part of on NBC Nightly News. What makes a great... Well, I understand we lost a football team. Okay. Yeah, we lost a football game with the Bucks yesterday, but fortunately, I went with a winner on yeah, Saturday. I, I was up in Atlanta. Oh, you were the Gators. That's right. Yes. Boy, I got to tell you, you should have been there for that sigh of relief. No, not just because the Gators won the game. That was expected. It was the relief of finally being able to talk out loud about what everybody had been talking about in loud whispers. The Fiesta Bowl. There was joy. There was elation. The Gators were going to the Fiesta Bowl. The last hurdle had been cleared. Now, this is probably going to be the hottest ticket for any college game. No, correct that. The second hottest ticket. The first hottest is actually an airline ticket to get to Phoenix for the game. At any rate, the players are relieved because now they can talk about what everybody else is talking about, and they started to do that right after the SEC championship game in Atlanta. It feels great. You know, this is a three-beat. Uh, first time it's ever been done here. Uh, it's just a great atmosphere here up here in Georgia. I'm uh, just great. Uh, they, uh, thankful to be on a great team. Well, I got to tell you, for the first time, you can now think ahead to, to the next one. Yeah, we set our goals at the beginning of the year to be in Tempe, and that's where we're going to be. Exactly. You know, everyone's been looking forward to it, the whole country. Uh, now they'll get what they asked for. Well, definitely. We're excited to be going there. You know, what a challenge that is, and we're excited for that, the opportunity to play them. And uh, God's blessed us all year, and uh, we're just excited to enjoy Christmas and go off and have a, have a good chance, a good opportunity. Now, from the sublime to the Bucks. Oh, my, does this feel familiar or what? After yesterday's loss, Sam Weiss took the blame. Was anyone else putting it out there somewhere else? I don't know. The defense seemed unmotivated. The offensive line allowed eight sacks with two quarterbacks into play. Trent Dilfer gets ejected for thinking he was in the WWF instead of the NFL. And then there were the big plays, the ones the Bucks didn't want to give up, that they gave up. When that puzzle went together, it spelled loss in capital letters. Remember the saying I heard a couple of weeks ago, players are hired to play, coaches are hired to win. These are people that we believe in, or they wouldn't be here. And uh, when, uh, when they don't have a good day, the, it feels like they, they let us down in some ways, but in other ways it's just disappointing that they didn't quite get there that day, and we share the responsibility. Hey, take a look at this. You recognize the guy throwing the ball there? That's uh, in Indianapolis today. I'll give you a hint. Craig Erickson, you are right. Craig might get another shot to take the throttle of the Colts. Jim Harbaugh took a bad hit during yesterday's game. Here it is. They had scheduled an MRI on his knee today, but apparently they decided to go on in, in an exploratory arthroscopic procedure on what was first described as a sprained knee. Just how that affects his status for upcoming games isn't known at this hour, but if he is out for next Sunday, which he probably is, Greg Erickson or Paul Justin could get tapped for the start. Scare of the weekend. Woo, watch this. Ever take a puck in the face? Can't even imagine it. Can you? Brian Bellows at a Lightning did during the game last night. The goalie gets to wear a mask. The other players don't. Oh, boy, it hurt. It hurt real good. But the good news is he just suffered a bruise, not even any stitches. He's okay. Well, okay, except for a little hurt ego over the 5-4 loss the team suffered. Hey, just got word the Redskins have announced a new stadium uh, going in and land over Maryland. The Yankees, incidentally, have re-signed Wade Boggs to a two-year deal. And Penny Hardaway has been named NBA Player of the Month.
Thank you, Jeff. That's it. Lots going <laughs> on. Okay. It's like a scene from the classic Hitchcock, The Birds. Coming up next, vultures invade a Bay Area community. We'll take you there live in two minutes. Not long ago, we loaned these mechanics Home Depot's Husky Tools and asked them to give them a shot. We mentioned they were guaranteed forever, just like craftsmen. Now they won't give them back. And uh, we don't really feel like arguing with them. Husky, the toughest name in tools. And only at the Home Depot. Uh, all right, uh, take care of yourself and call us. Everything okay? Now he's going to France to study painting. I thought he was into photography. Well, now he wants to be Monet. Last year, a nice tea business, now this. I mean, why can't he find one thing and stick to it? Well, he is your dad. Now there's a plan that not only helps you build assets, but manages them as well. Edna Retirement Services. Build for retirement, manage for life. Florida sugar farmers, working hard, supporting their families. Now some extremists want to impose a new two cent a pound tax just on sugar farmers and use the money to buy 130,000 acres of their land and then evict the farmers from their own property. Tax them, buy their land, kick them off. It's a tax hike and land grab that could cost 40,000 jobs across Florida. And it's wrong. Florida sugar farmers, jobs worth keeping. You think you have a big holiday gift list? Imagine being the merchandise manager at Luria's, spending $60 million on gifts everyone has to love. No wonder Luria's offers only the best name brands like Crown Corning, Circulon, Barberware, Black & Decker, Cuisinart, Braun, Lennox, Mikasa, Hoover, and more. The best names and quality at Florida's best prices. That's Luria's holiday gift standard because you wouldn't want anything less. They're thieves thwarting the true meaning of holiday spirit. What are they doing? Stealing Christmas lights and displays like these right out of someone's front yard. Is it happening in more than one neighborhood? Find out at 11. And she's a six-year-old who's never heard the sound of Santa's sleigh. All she knows is the sound of silence. But this year, that could change. That story tonight in my health report. It is like a scene from Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Vultures are invading a Pinellas County community. News Channel 8's John Muller is in Oldsmar. What's going on there, John? Bob, it is a very bizarre situation, almost comical unless you live in this Oldsmar home behind me. It is a little dark now and you can't see, but this is Vulture Central. Let me show you what we're talking about here on tape. For the last two weeks, hundreds of vultures have decided to roost in the trees behind the home of Evelyn and Chuck Artists. As you might expect, it's causing all kinds of problems, not the least of which is a horrible smell. The vultures have ripped open two holes in the screened-in lanai, and they're constantly landing on the roof of the home. This reflective tinsel on the roof is not a Christmas decoration. It's up there to scare the vultures away. It has not worked, unfortunately. Tomorrow, an agent for the U.S. Department of Agriculture will come out here to try to persuade these pesky vultures to leave. Now, it won't be easy. The plan is to use some pyrotechnic rockets similar to fireworks to try to scare these vultures away. Believe it or not, these same vultures came here last year. This is the second year in a row. And last year it was so bad, a police officer pulled up, checked the backyard, knocked on the doors of the house, thinking someone might be dead inside because of all the vultures. Of course, everyone is fine except for the nuisance. Bob? Wow. John, why is this happening? It seems to be, we seem to see more vultures in our skies this year than I can ever recall. You're right. The USDA says this is mating season. A lot of these birds are coming down from north for the winter, and it's just one of those things. They will be out here tomorrow to try to... Uh, get a handle on it and hopefully scare them away. It's just a very strange situation. Our uh, helicopter pilot, Judge Chapin, was wondering if perhaps this is the sign of a more severe winter than, than normal with all these vultures coming down hmm. here. Well, we'll keep following that story. That's your story, John. You cover it. You got it, Bob. <laughs> okay. I'll be here. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. That's News Channel 8 at 6. We'll be back tonight at 11. Hope you are, too. Have a good evening. This is not a popular idea with the American...